The Philippines is characterized by a population that is nowhere near homogeneous. To understand this, the geographic makeup of the country should first be observed. The Philippines is an archipelago, its shores separated by straits, channels, gulfs, and seas. Inland, territories are further divided by rivers and mountain ranges. The manifold character of the land dictated the manifold character of its inhabitants. It dictated the dynamics of community and the formation of values, rituals, and ways of living. As the Hispanized Philippines debuted in the world map hundreds of years ago, the islands may have been united under one name, but the Filipinos remained an assortment because even then, the conquistadors failed to penetrate and homogenize the culture of many native communities who refused to submit to sword and cross. These are the indigenous peoples of the Philippines, the original settlers of these islands whose diverse cultures managed to maintain a semblance of purity then and now. The indigenous peoples of the archipelago are divided into 110 ethno-linguistic groups. Unlike the Philippine mainstream society, which is almost completely Christianized and Westernized due to its adaptation to the manners of the colonizer, the indigenous communities faithfully, at times fiercely, protected their way of life. They are proud of their heritage. To them, nothing is more dignified than to continue living as their great ancestors did. Through time, the pillar of dignity among indigenous people slowly crumbled. The 21st century may not be the best of times for the country's IPs just yet, as they continue to struggle for their rights, especially on ancestral domain and collective intellectual property, mostly violated by big corporations against whom they rarely have the resources to fight. <laughs> As the shouts grow louder, a venue for voicing out their concerns is born. The Philippines, led by its National Commission for Culture and the Arts, or NCCA, has been holding huge convergence festivals for IPs every October of the past years. The first convergence held in Davao City in the southern island of Mindanao, the Kalimutan Festival, collected the IPs from all over this vast territory. Kalimutan means gathering, a term which is shared among the Bagobo, the Maguindanao, and the Maranao, three ethnic groups living in this southern Philippine landmass. For the second convergence, it was time for their northern brethren to come together as the IPs of the island of Luzon met up for the Timpuyog Festival held in Santiago City. Timpuyog, a term of the Ilocanos of Northern Philippines, means unity. These convergence festivals have become instruments of IP empowerment, as much as they are an educational tour for the so-called mainstream Filipinos. The third and latest Indigenous Peoples Festival proves to be the biggest yet as it dared to invite all 110 Indigenous groups of the Philippines to unite in this gathering dubbed as Dungog, a Hiligaynon term which means dignity. The word, again, captures the spotlight. Dungog, dignity in the local tongue of the people of Capiz, this year's magnanimous host. The 
province revs up and for the next few days willingly yields to a welcome invasion of indigenous culture. The tables have turned. The capital of Capiz flows with the energy of a metro brimming with people. After all, the whole archipelago has sent in all and sundry, in an almost literal sense. Capiz is a chosen host for this year's Indigenous Peoples Festival. Preparations for the Dungog Convergence wrap up. Within the expanse of the Villarreal Stadium, local artisans complete the finishing touches in the construction of several huts conforming to indigenous architecture. The huts, in truth, are not very exact renditions of the native houses because of the expensive logistics of shipping in materials for the real deal. Instead, they are approximations, set up to at least give the people an idea of how certain ethnic groups' house would look like. The indigenous people's village that will later house the delegations of different IP groups shall be the venue for interactive demonstrations of their way of living. <laughs> Barely a week before the festival, Typhoon Quetzana devastated Manila and most of its adjacent provinces. This morning, elders of the Kalinga, the Panay Bukidnon, and the Bagobo, representing the three major Philippine regions, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, invoked three different deities to skew the path of another incoming typhoon and simultaneously bless the occasion. The Capiz Gymnasium is filled to the rafters. The Capiz Nons share the bleachers with visiting students and common interest groups from neighboring provinces. All clad in their native garb and announcing their arrival with gongs and drums and strings, the IP representatives enter the gym, flesh and blood. They march on, an overwhelming multitude. 110 became more than a figure. Suddenly, it is a staggering enumeration of all the ethno-linguistic groups only seen in books or heard in the academia. Outside, a huge flock gathers by the bamboo gates of the indigenous people's village. The gates are pushed open, and the grounds are suddenly swarmed by eager spectators, researchers, and IP representatives alike. They are welcomed into the complex by a group dancing the Escotis of Capis, which is performed in every happy occasion, especially upon the completed construction of a house about to be occupied by its owners. Everywhere inside the IP village, there is no space unused and no phase unlit. Photo ops, interviews, purchases, tutorials on the making of tools and handicrafts, cultural demonstrations. This is the Tagbuanay, an interactive education on the native way of living where the IPs are willing teachers and the classrooms are far from the ordinary. The exchanges went on inside the village throughout the five-day festival. In the Iyaha, or cooking workshops, students marvel at the kitchen tricks of the natives. The comforting hints of ginger, green chilies, and onion waft around the huts. Pork, chicken, fish, rice, snails. Indigenous culinary treats merrily boil and sizzle in pots and pans, 
enjoying a few seconds in the sun before being gobbled up by participants. The Palumba Anay, an exhibition of traditional games, is a crowd drawer. The games provide a peek into the native Filipino, that with unassuming grace and precision, brawn and endurance. and the love for fun. <laughs> Further on into the week, it would appear that the learning is not all a one-way street. Copies widens its welcoming embrace as the visiting IP delegates pull out of Raw City and head to the main tourist destinations all over the province. Seeing and absorbing facts about places and monuments they have never been to before, the afternoon VIPs were ready with smiles. The easy day was a welcome break from the constantly high energy of the festivities they left behind at the capital. Although one cannot hope to fully understand all the nuances of the featured IP groups in a span of one week, the Convergence Festival serves as a springboard of interest, from which broader research about the indigenous people shall commence. Back in the Kapi's gymnasium, more of the alternative education is on continuous flow. After a while, the center floor becomes the stage and gives way for the Pasundayag, one of the more anticipated highlights of the festival, where featured IP groups shine in the indigenous performing arts. It is a medley of chanted prayers, narrations, musical performances, skits and illustrations, and dances that cover occasions from birth to courtship and marriage, mostly ending in community dancing, with the awestruck audience joining in. The Dumog Festival, much like its predecessors, is more than a convergence of the indigenous peoples of the Philippines. It is the intersection of two paths, the native and the westernized neo-Filipino. Then again, it would seem that this intersection has long been in place. Up next, the cultural marriage explained. The Dumog Festival featured ethno-linguistic communities substantially representing the whole archipelago. From the largest region, Luzon, the Gatang of Mountain Province, the Kankane of Benguet, the Ifugao. The Kalinga, from the province of Palawan, the Jama Mapun, Palawan. Palawani and Molbog.
the Mangyana Pindoro. And the Agta of Bicol. Following Luzon in size and scope is the island of Mindanao. From there come the Bagobo of Davao, the Subaran of Zamboanga, the Sama and Bajau of Tawi Tawi, the Tausug of Sulu, and the Tiboli of the island's southern territories. The Visayas, a cluster of islands at the heart of the Philippines, is represented by the Bukid Non of Panay Island. The Leyte Samarnon. The Ati. and the Akianon, Hiligaynon, and Kinaraya of Western Visayas. It can be observed that their culture has taken in aspects barred from foreign traditions. The Kinaraya, for one, presented the Comedia in their native tongue. The Comedia, a theatrical performance primarily about kings, queens, and commoners, Caught in a clash between good and evil is of Spanish influence enjoyed by Filipinos from the 1800s until now. Other manifestations of cultural integration with the West surfaced during the festival. Sunglasses, cowboy hats, denim pants, a guitar, an accordion, and a wedding illustration done with Christian rites. One of the more interesting cases of the mix of Christianity and indigenous faith occurred during the welcome prayer. Ama, alluding to the Christian God the Father, is invoked alongside the name of Kabunyan, supreme being of the Highlanders of Luzon. The Bagobo even chanted a prayer to the tune of the Christian hymn, How Great Thou Art. Yet these may not be surprising at all. In this day and age when all the world is interconnected by footpaths, bridges, roads and telecommunication signals, the osmosis of cultures is inevitable. Such is the noble spirit in this indigenous peoples sharing themselves and teaching their methods to their fellow Filipinos that, strangely, know too little of them. The ways of the indigenous take many moons of practice to smoothly execute, like the Tarok of the Palawan and the Salayan of the Subanan, where the shamans in their native land swing as high as 10 feet above the ground. The eyepiece make the movements and the dances look easy, and they seem as such until the audience members try themselves. And laugh at their own awkwardness. Many of the IP delegates are young people. 
These youngsters emulate the ways of their elders through participating in their schools of living tradition, or SLTs, already in vogue amongst indigenous communities. Here, in the Dungog Festival, these kids and teenagers did not disappoint. They could very well be a notch luckier than their parents and grandparents, as the current Philippine landscape is slowly but steadily appreciating indigenous culture. But even then, the road to a completely IP-friendly nation is far from easy. This edition of the Indigenous Peoples Festival featured at least 17 groups as main acts in the Pasundayak and the Tagbuanay. But in fact, out of the 110 indigenous ethno-linguistic groups of the Philippines, around 80 leaders representing each of their own communities came to the Dungog Festival to participate in the fora, aiming to put forward their suggestions and grievances which, even upon first digestion, all ring true. Our indigenous peoples have been deprived, neglected, they lost their territories, and I think it takes us to celebrate this Dungo Festival just for them to be able to be heard. No? Sometimes leads us to celebrate our secret rights in a wrong occasion just to entertain people who do not understand us. Our community, may mga kumpanya gusto sana kumasok sa aming lugar. Tinatanong namin yung kumpanya, sana ba yung APIC, uh, uh, yung free prior informed consent sa community. Ah, wala nang problema, sir. Mag-istorya na kami si Mayor. Aba, sabi namin, aba, si Mayor na. Bakit kami ba? Sino pa kami? Sino pa kami sa aming community? The moment na magkakuroon ka ng task, eventually, nawawala dahan-dahan yung mga traditional values. Instead ng kontento mong mamuhay sa isang kubo, eventually, gusto mong mamuhay na may TV, may radio, lahat. Their sentiments echo the general problems of Filipino indigenous peoples in the face of globalization. Mas mahal pa ang igel kaysa tao ng ITC. Concurrent with the Dungog Festival, the NCCA also held a conference of communal intellectual property rights attended by delegates and speakers from the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN. ...bagay na makikita, na ma mahahawakan, ibig sabihin tangible for, nahahawakan, iyon po ang intellectual property. The Forum on Intellectual Property Rights raised another pressing issue among indigenous people who are all too often depicted in postcards and billboards. What is my right if my face is published abroad? And how do we monitor this? Ang rule po, yung photograph is a copyright. But kung hindi mo rin lang mo kaya, you should ask the permission of the person you are taking photograph of. And there should be permission sought before that is published. Unless once lang siya as part of the news, Oh, part of the, the broadcast coverage. The Hinun Anon, or the various fora conducted throughout the five-day Dungog event, is a continuing tradition carried over from the previous Convergence festivals. It has helped further expose the concerns of IP groups. IP education, sustainable livelihood, tangible and intangible properties, the role of government institutions in strengthening support for the IPs. These are the most pressing issues brought up in the Hinonanon, which were, in the end, consolidated along with suggested solutions coming from the IPs, representatives of the ASEAN and the UNESCO, and other stakeholders. The end result was the Dungog Declaration. The cross-sectional of the tribes are here because of the present, uh, uh, because of that uh, typhoon that threatened our country. But nevertheless, uh, for the past two days, we were able to come up 
with what we are talking right now. So we uh, are now submitting to you the uh, declaration that was uh, done for us for your scrutiny and approval. So uh, we would like to submit to you, sir, on behalf of the group, this uh, declaration for your scrutiny. Thank you very much. The impact of this Indigenous Peoples Festival is unprecedented. It has succeeded to unite the archipelago's indigenous communities. It is solidarity in celebrating life. And solidarity in the continuing fight for their rights and dignity.